welcome to the Old Time Radio Westerns. I'm your host, Andrew Rines, and let's get into this episode. This episode is going to be Fort Laramie. Original air date is October 14th, 1956, and the title is Still Waters. Thanks for listening, and I hope you enjoy. At the gallop! Raymond Burr as Captain Lee Quince. Specially transcribed tales of the dark and tragic ground of the wild frontier. The saga of fighting men who rode the rim of empire. And the dramatic story of Lee Quince, Captain of Cavalry. Captain? Oh, Mr. Seibert. The men looked fine, I thought. Well, yes, sir, they looked all right. Good drill. Good parade. Yes, sir, but actually I was more concerned with... Well, weren't you listening, sir? I was watching, Lieutenant. I almost never listened to a dress parade. I mean the band. The band seemed to march real good. Captain, the music. Frankly, I thought it was terrible. Oh? Uh-huh. Usually it just sounds bad. But today it was awful. Well, didn't it sound strange to you, Timmy, off-key? I was watching B Company, Mr. Seibert's march just fine. I don't know, maybe it's my ears. Uh, more likely my ears. I don't pay much mind to the music. When I was a boy, my mother thought I had a promising voice. So I'd sing for her. And the hogs had come running. Then the neighbors got so they'd come running, too. I got a lot of encouragement to quit singing... But just because you couldn't sing well, Captain, doesn't mean you don't have an appreciation for music. Oh, I think it does, Mr. Seibert. You see, I wasn't just obliging my mother. I thought I sounded fine, too. Well, you were considerably younger, sir. I'm sure you've outgrown all that by now. After all, with your mother to encourage you, you couldn't be blamed for thinking... Around her neck she wore a yellow ribbon. Uh, Captain. She wore it in the winter and the merry month of May. Um, And when they ask her uh, why... Really, Captain, it was more about the regimental band than anything else. And if you didn't notice the band... Far away, far away. She wore it for her lover who was far, far away. Yes, sir. Well, I'm beginning to think I was very mistaken if you'll excuse far me, Captain. Far away, far away. <laughs> Captain Quince. <clears throat> Major Daggett, what are you doing? Well, I was uh, singing, sir. You call that singing? Yes, I do. And I suppose it's a minority opinion. Are you uh, drunk, Captain? No, sir. I can account for the singing, if you're interested, Major. I'm only interested in stopping it. We've had enough bad music around here for one day. I thought Dress Parade came off fine, sir. I was very proud of B Company. Captain, I don't want to hear another reference to Dress Parade today. Yes, sir. It's over. That's the only good thing about it. It's over. I don't want to discuss it. I don't want to hear it discussed. That's an order, Captain. Yes, sir. I won't even ask if you heard the band. Did you hear the band? Must have. I saw it. Seemed to me they marched real good. No matter if you heard it or not, if that fellow and you call singing's a sample of your ear for music that... Marched real good? I thought so, sir. If I want marching, I'll get a company of infantry. From a band, Captain, I expect just one thing, music. You think I'm being unreasonable? Kind of hard to get music out of busted instruments, I imagine. I realize some of the pieces are quite old. Schultz tells me in the field they have problems with rust, sand, foul, and the cornet pistons, but busted instruments? The report said the band was brawling over something Saturday night. Someone put his foot through a field drum. Some of the blow horns got smashed. You read a report on a band brawl? Mm-hmm. On your desk, Sunday morning, Major. 
Oh. Well, uh, I want to talk to the bandmaster, and if you'll stop delaying me, I will. Uh, sorry to hold you up, Major. Oh, Lee. I'm, uh, I'm sorry. For what? Well, I'm mad as the devil. I didn't mean to take it out on you. I was handy. And you were uh, singing, don't forget. Kind of set me off. <laughs> set Mr. Seibert's off, too. Fact of the matter is, we have guests on the post. I wanted to be especially proud of our band. Oh, and what they did to Boots and Saddles, I... I think it was Boots and Saddles. Well, uh, I gotta see Schultz. Tell him I thought the band marched real good. Harrison? Not me, Sergeant. Well, we'd like to get that lumber loaded so you could run the wagon up to old Bedlam, unload it, and come back here and start all over. No, I'm doing what I can. I swear I am. You ain't ailing. You shake a leg. Both of them shaking now, Sergeant. All right, Harrison. Come out with it. I got about half a minute's patience left. You know I'm a reasonable man. You know that right off. Well, if I'm not reasonable, maybe there's a cause. I ain't got long to wait. Like this contrary weather. It ought to be cooling off. Give a man a feel for hard work. It's got no right to be blazing hot this time of year. You're asking for a change of weather? I'd be obliged if you could arrange it, Sergeant. Anything, just any small thing would be an improvement. Well, now... You just come to the right man, Harrison. Just for you, I'm going to change the weather. You mind now you ask me to do it? Oh, I ask. I sure ask, all right. Trooper Harrison? Yes, Sergeant. Report to the guardhouse. Guardhouse? On what charge? On the charge that you asked for. It takes you right out of the blazing sun. Of course, how are you going to get a breath of air or something else again? But seeing any small change would be an improvement. Sergeant, I'll be getting back to my loading now. I thought you wanted to change the weather. One day I'm going to learn to keep my mouth shut around here. That day comes, you write me a letter so I'll know. You know I can't write. I tell you one good thing, Harrison. I just ain't rising to any more bait, Sergeant. Fatigue's over in half an hour, and after supper... There's a band concert, I know. Well, it ain't gonna cool me off none. Not a cent's worth. Only there ain't gonna be no band concert. In fact, if Bandmaster Schultz can't explain himself any better to Major Daggett than he has so far... Oh, 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 my foot! Maybe we heard the last toot ever from our regimental band. You around, Pliny? No. What are you doing behind the pickle barrel? You drop a penny? Are you alone, Captain? Sure. I'm not exactly open. It's, it's almost 4.30. You'd open at midnight to sell a two-penny cigar. Now, come on out from behind that barrel. Well, it's... Oh, my, it's unnerving. That's what it is. <clears throat> what did you want, Captain? What are you whispering about? Well, you never know who's listening these days. I'm listening. I'm hard put to hear you. Are you going to sell me a glass of beer, or do I have to draw it myself? Aha. Aha. Who sent you? Pliny, it's a hot day. Oh, no, you don't, sir. I know an investigation when I see one. Well, you may tell that committee and Major Daggett and all the powers that be that I am living up to the letter of my agreement with the United States Army. Maybe you ought to have a glass of beer, too. Yeah, 
It's not my concern if the regimental band can't play without instruments. What about the band? No beer, no band. Oh, I'll miss the drums. Won't you? Plenty. What time of day do you start making sense? Why, Captain, I believe you don't know. You came here in innocence. But these are dark days, and the seeds of distrust are on the wind. This time I'm going into the canteen and get that beer. There is no beer. There will be no beer. Beer is a closed issue. Poor Schultz. Poor, poor Schultz. You keep going from beer to band. From no beer to no band. And you can thank Mrs. Feemster and her committee for that. Mrs. Feemster's not doing anything. She's just visiting Fort Laramie. Her visit was ill-timed. Just when Schultz needed new instruments the worst way. Ah, uh, but alas. Five percent of nothing will not buy French horns and trumpets. And, eh, eh, oh my. I will miss the drums. I'm still not reaching you, am I, Captain? I, um... I know. No, you're not. Then let me put it simply. A, B, C. A is for the agreement. Now then, 5% of all proceeds from the sale of beer I give to B, which is the band. From these monies, Schultz buys new instruments. That is, uh, he did until... Oh, yes, until C. C is for committee, headed by Mrs. Feemster. The Committee for Moral Improvement, if you will. Oh, and that means no beer. It follows, then, no beer, no proceeds, no band. Yeah. Oh, my. I put that well, didn't I? If you did, you better climb in that pickle barrel, Pliny. A subtler that doesn't sell beer needs a real hiding place. Uh, but, but uh, the brine... Salty. <laughs> Oh, Captain, I was just about to send for you. This came from the settlers, Major. You got any idea what's going on uh, around here? Hold your voice down. Come here. Pliny was whispering, too, for a while. Now, listen to me, Lee. I get a better idea than anyone what's going on around here. Mrs. Feemster's in my office now. Let's go in here. The army run by a woman now, Major? That's not funny, Lee. I don't mean it funny. I can't get a glass of beer. Pliny says that woman's why. I've just learned from Washington that there's several thousand Mrs. Feemsters, Captain, and their ranks seem to be growing daily. Not only that, but they're also Mr. Feemsters, and their voices are getting louder every day. Mrs. Feemster doesn't like beer? On moral grounds. She likes whiskey better? Whiskey isn't the issue. Beer, light wines, such as are sold at the sutler's canteen. Then she likes whiskey better. She wouldn't see it that way. Besides, it isn't just the beer. That's just part of their plan for moral improvement. They want to see that all posts have libraries, more recreational facilities, concerts. From the regimental band, playing on no instruments? Well, Mrs. Feemster realizes the problem there. I got nothing against libraries, recreation. We need them. But do you think we got any kind of a drinking problem at Fort Laramie? I've never been aware of one. If we had one, you'd be aware of it. We all would. And if we had one, it wouldn't be on account of beer served to the settlers. I know that, Lee. You act like this was up to me. Well, let me assure you, it isn't. Ms. Feemster, post commander? I'm still in command here, and that means I still follow orders from Washington. That's where the real pressure's coming from. They've banned the sale of beer at Fort Sully, Fort McPherson, and Fort Totten. And I can't keep them from banning it here. That brings us back to whiskey again. If a man can't get a glass of beer on the post, he'll go off the post. You think Mrs. Feemster knows what a hog ranch is? A whiskey ranch? I doubt it. Well, they got them now, all around Fort Sully and Fort Totten. And men that used to drink beer at those posts are stealing off and rotting their insides on hog ranch whiskey. You seem pretty sure of your facts, Lee. Ask Major Trucks. He got the information at the post surgeon's meeting last month at Fort Randall. The post surgeons are recommending that they reopen the canteens. Hmm... I wonder. Just wonder. 
No, no, it'd never work. No, what wouldn't work? I don't think even Major Trucks could convince Mrs. Feemster she was short-sighted. I was thinking more of letting Mrs. Feemster make her own decision about being short-sighted. You haven't met her, have you? No, I'm kind of looking forward to it. Now, Lee... I'd like to volunteer to show Mrs. Feemster around the post tomorrow, Major. Volunteer? You might just tell her I'll call for her tomorrow, right after guard mount. Afternoon to you, Major. in time, we'd want to build a library building separate. But that takes time. Right now, there's only one building not being put to use. Well, I'm sure I don't know where that is, Captain. Goodness knows we've covered most of the post. Mm, except the sutler's, ma'am, is just ahead. But surely the sutler's store isn't vacant. Well, not the store, just the canteen. It's part of the same building. Is that where they keep beer? When they had it, ma'am. My dear young man... I have never set foot in a saloon, and I don't intend to go now. A saloon's where they sell liquor, ma'am. This canteen's an empty room and a counter. But if you don't want to look at it, You're why... certain, certain there's nothing in the nature of spirits in there. I give you my word, Mrs. Feemster. There isn't a sign of spirit in there now. Very well, then. I suppose I should take the long view... After all, the library is the important thing. But in a saloon... No, canteen. I'll take your word there's a difference, Captain. After you, ma'am. Thank you, Captain. Canteen straight ahead, Mrs. Feemster. Uh, now then, Pliny, I got a long order here. Best you write it down. Uh, just a moment, Sergeant. Just a moment. <clears throat> Captain? Yes, Pliny? Oh, have you met Mrs. Feemster? This is Pliny Burgess, the settler. Mr. Burgess? Madam. Now, Captain, you know very well the canteen is... Uh, well, it's... Yeah, uh, we know, Pliny. We come to see how the room would do for a library. A library? Uh, you mean books. Um, and books in there? We'll just look it over. You mind your customer over there. Oh, well, I don't know. I got but... cash money, Pliny. Uh, coming. Yes, indeed. In fact, I, I'm here. Well, Mrs. Feemster? Well, yes, I think perhaps you may be right, Captain. Lemon extract. This room would make. I want all the lemon extract you got. All the vanilla, peppermint, ginger, <clears throat> all. Every drop. Then I want everything in stock in the way of cinnamon, red pepper sauces, bay rum. You got any smelly water, Pliny? Smelly? Uh, oh, no, I don't believe I have any smelly Oh, no, no. You're not paying much mind to the room, ma'am. Hey? Oh, why? Oh, yes, it's it's first rate. Splendid. O.D. something, Pliny. O.D.? Uh, smelly. Excuse me, ma'am. Uh, you know what I'm trying to say. I? You know, you women folks uses it sometimes. Smells right nice. O.D.? Old D. Cologne. Oh, that's it, ma'am. Thank you kindly. Uh, I'll take all you got, Pliny. All uh, I've got. Seems to me we could get several hundred books in here, Miss Feemster. Now, along that wall there. Uh, we just could... a minute, Captain. Young man. Uh, you talking to me, ma'am? I am indeed. Your order to Mr. Burgess all the lemon extract, all the cologne. Yes, ma'am. May I ask what you're planning to do with it? Why, drink it, ma'am. Drink it? Well, maybe not all of it. I'll sell some, chances are. Maybe give some now and again to my friends. But... Drink it? Well, ma'am, you strain extract or that old D stuff through some coarse bread, you got a fine batch of alcohol. Oh, my. Now, myself, I'd rather have a glass of beer, but we can't get that no more here. So, well, man's left to his own devices, you might say. Thank you, guys. I just hope it did the trick, Captain. Uh, uh, right now, we almost have this added up, so let me see what that... Co that comes to uh, $57.43, Sergeant. Pliny, <laughs> I've been thinking this over. Huh? Oh. Well, well, now, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. 
Now, since you're such a good customer, I'm going to let you have the whole thing for fifty-seven dollars and thirty-three cents. You drink it, Pliny. I'm going to Laramie Village for a beer. <laughs> You've come to say goodbye. No, I wasn't sure I'd be welcome, Mrs. Feemster. Major tells me you were um, a while settling down. I very nearly fainted. You may as well know that. Well, if it'd make you feel any better, it was all made up for your benefit, man. So Major Daggett assured me. Oh, my captain. I'm going back to Washington with a brand new outlook. I think our Committee on Moral Improvement may just revise its thinking a bit. You talked to the post-surgeon. Indeed, I did. I'm taking the entire matter up with all of official Washington. Yes, ma'am. And I want to thank you for opening my eyes, Captain. And that nice orderly of yours. Uh, Harrison? Yes, Trooper Harrison. He's the one who makes those nice outdoor stoves. He... He is? He was cooking last evening down by the Laramie River. I was out for my evening constitutional, and he explained it all to me about his stove. Uh, a retort, a condenser, and a receiver. Uh, Harrison? Um, he... Called it a stove? Oh, he had some other name for it. A foolish name, too. A foolish name like a, like a still? Yes, but I could see it was a stove. He's promised to send me the plans, show me just how to make it. Uh, Mrs. Feemster, that stove, I was just... Oh, oh my goodness, the stage is ready. Goodbye, Captain. <laughs> Goodbye, Mrs. Feemster. Fort Laramie is produced and directed by Norman MacDonald and stars Raymond Burr as Lee Quince, Captain of Cavalry, with Vic Perrin as Sergeant Gorse. The script was specially written for Fort Laramie by Kathleen Height, with sound patterns by Bill James and Ray Kemper, musical supervision by Amerigo Marino. Featured in the cast were Howard McNear, Jeanette Nolan, and Sam Edwards. Jack Moyles is Major Daggett, and Harry Bartell is Lieutenant Seibertz. Company tension. Dismiss. Next week, another transcribed story of the Northwest Frontier and the troopers who fought under Lee Quince, Captain of Cavalry. <laughs> Are you a student, businessman, musician, stamp collector? No matter what your profession or age, your opposite number in some faraway country wants to know about you and to tell you about his own life and thoughts. CBS Radio urges you to send your name to Letters from Abroad, 45 East 65th Street, New York City, mentioning your age, occupation, and interests. They'll find you a suitable correspondent in the country of your choice.
This has been a presentation of otrwesterns.com, and we hope you enjoyed. Please take some time to like and rate our shows in your favorite podcast application. Follow us on Facebook by going to otrwesterns.com slash Facebook. Join in the conversation by going to otrwesterns.com slash Discord. And don't forget to send us an email, podcast at otrwesterns.com. This episode is copyright under the attribution, not commercial, share like copyright. For more information, go to otrwesterns.com slash copyright. Have a great day, and again, thanks for listening.